Psalm 92 in the Passion Translation says this, It's so enjoyable to come before you with uncontainable praises spilling from our hearts. How we love to sing our praises over and over again to you, to the matchless God, high and exalted over all. I believe the psalmist with these sentiments. Throughout the books of the Bible, we're told more than 250 times to praise God. He's totally worthy of our praise, yesterday, today and forever. God moves our hearts with his love and our response should be praise and worship. But what happens when we find ourselves in a place where we have no praise? What happens when the circumstances of life have robbed us of praise and worship, when the praise we used to have just lies crushed and broken at our feet? When we open our mouths but no praise comes forth. Instead, maybe there's only tears and heartache and pain. What do we do when our understanding of life and our expectations, when the future as we saw it, have all evaporated like mist and we just lie in a crumpled heap? Maybe we run away from God. Maybe we run away from other people. Maybe we put on a brave face and try and tough it out. And maybe we just give up on ourselves and God. There's all that guilt that we know we should praise and worship, but we don't have the power or the resource to do it. Maybe we're so hurt that we blame the very one who we should praise. John 4.24, as Jesus speaking, says this, From here on, worshipping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit, and he longs to have sincere worshippers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. And later, of course, Jesus says it's the truth that will set us free. So surely, if God wants us to worship in truth and come to him in truth, then the place we are in must be a valid place to bring praise and worship. God knows our hearts better than we know our hearts. He knows the hurts we sometimes carry. He's not exempt from the knowledge and experience of pain and grief and tragedy and disappointment. He's been fully human, so he understands every emotion that we go through. Father God, looked down on his own son, crucified and dying on the cross. He understands grief. When we find ourselves in a place of brokenness, and we all surely will at some points in our life, we can legitimately come to the one who knows just how we feel and we come in the truth of that, with all the pain, with all the tears, with everything that we're carrying. He has promised that he'll be our shield and our protector, our strong tower, that he will never leave us or forsake us, and that he will reward those who diligently seek him. 
I've often wished I could be a spiritual, spiritual superman like Job was and say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Bless the Lord. But the truth is vastly different from that. I'm not very strong. I have doubts and lack understanding and wisdom. But I do know that I can come to God as I am with no pretense. Psalm 56 says, You've stored my many tears in your bottle. Not one will be lost, for they are all recorded in your book of remembrance. Even if all I can bring is my tears, these will be acceptable to God. Why does he store our tears? It's a funny thing to collect, don't you think so? Revelation 7.17 says, For the Lamb at the centre of the throne continuously shepherds them unto life, guiding them to the everlasting fountains of the water of life. And God will wipe away from their eyes every last tear. Maybe there'll be a time for us when these tears that have been stored up will be re-examined by us and Jesus together. And every one of those tears will be wiped away by him. Maybe then we'll get the answers to the why questions. Maybe then we'll get the answers to the prayers that haven't been answered in our time scale. To the healings that have been prayed for and not seen. Maybe then we will understand as we see through the eyes of eternity and not through the eyes of flesh and blood. I think it's important that we come to God just as we are, in truth and open to his Holy Spirit. We may not be able to sing victory songs, but by being here, we will say to all the principalities and powers, I am in him. Tears and all, and that's my worship. I'd like to sing a song, if I may, that's meant a lot to me. It's a song by Delirious Martin Smith. It's a song of the broken and disillusioned, but of a desire to wait for him to lift our heads. Find me in the river Find me 
you.